I've got some sad news. My beloved M1 Mac Mini has been replaced by the 16 inch MacBook Pro. But that got me thinking, what's next for Apple's beast of a mini desktop computer? Hello and welcome back to Mark Ellis Reviews and thank you for subscribing if you have. And if you haven't subscribed, the button's just down there. I'm nearly as boring about the M1 Mac Mini as I am about the M1 MacBook Air. I've made loads of videos about both of them, but I'm not going to apologize for doing that because people want to know more about these computers. And also, while the M1 MacBook Air is my favorite laptop of all time, the M1 Mac Mini is just the best desktop computer I've ever used. And it's also the most surprising on a daily basis. It's just so, so powerful. It's only recently been replaced by a monstrous 16 inch MacBook Pro. But to be honest, I didn't need to do that. That Mac mini would have carried on if I needed it to. Now it's kind of sat over here as a, a desktop server type thing. That's it, and that makes me really sad. It's not without its faults. I've talked a lot about the Bluetooth issues that I've had with the Mac mini, but I still love it. And I'm really excited about what could happen next. So let's get on with it. Here is what I wanna see from the next Mac Mini. When it comes to under the hood, I think we can keep this pretty simple. The M1 Pro and the M1 Max chips that have been put into the new MacBook Pros are absolutely stunning. I've sampled both in the 14 inch MacBook Pro and the 16 inch MacBook Pro, and I've even done a little test. I know, get me. I won't go through the entire test. It's in a video that I'll link to above, but, I took a 20 minute piece of 4K footage, quite chunky footage from this camera, the Sony FX3, which was recorded in 4K, 24 frames a second, 10 bit color, 422, and I rendered and exported it in Final Cut Pro. Now on my 16 gigabyte M1 Mac mini, the render took six minutes and 37 seconds. On the base spec M1 Pro chip in the 14 inch MacBook Pro, it took three minutes, 14 seconds, so pretty much half the time. And then in the spec'd up M1 Max, it took three minutes nine seconds not a massive saving over the pro but still impressive and then the export of that footage on the m1 mac mini 16 gig took 12 minutes 53 seconds whereas on the base spec m1 pro it took nine minutes 54 seconds and on the m1 max the 32 core mega ridiculous version, it took five minutes, 36 seconds. So that gives you an idea of how big the gap is between the M1 chip and the M1 Pro and the M1 Max. It's just huge. Now video is just one use case, admittedly, but people are seeing similar results with all sorts of stuff they're putting these new M1 Pro and M1 Max chips through. So when it comes to the next Mac mini, just put those chips inside it, that's it. Imagine that power in that desktop computer that's that big, always connected to power so it can do more with thermal efficiency and fans and stuff. Imagine having all that power in a Mac Mini. The worst thing Apple could do is put the rumored M2 chip into the Mac Mini. And the reason for that is that that chip is designated, we think, for the next MacBook Air. And that will focus on power, but also efficiency when it comes to the battery life. And that's great for things like the MacBook Air, but not for the Mac Mini. We want all those graphics cores, all that unified memory in that little computer. Apple has everything it needs to make the next Mac Mini an absolute powerhouse today. So give us the same unified memory choices, graphics cores choices, storage choices, etc., as those brilliant MacBook Pros, Apple, please. It's hard to get excited about the Mac mini design. It's not an ugly thing at all, but it's a bit underwhelming. It's just a square piece of aluminium, really. Granted, it doesn't look like any other desktop computer, which is typically Apple, but yeah, you can't get as excited about that as you can do, for example, about the MacBook Pro design or the iMac design. So when it comes to the design of the next Mac mini, Apple can have free reign with this. I just have one request, which is to focus entirely, again, on the chips and the stuff they put inside. Don't let design dictate what the thing looks like. It has to be about thermal efficiency and making the most of those internals. That might mean it needs to be bigger, chunkier, heavier. This sounds familiar, doesn't it? You see, Apple have made a bit of a rod for their own backs when they re-released the MacBook Pro design. And I say re-released because it went right back to the PowerBook days of old. It was thicker, chunkier, heavier. It's the sort of thing the Johnny Ive era Apple would never have done. And I think they need to continue doing this, particularly with devices like the Mac Mini. Doesn't matter how big, thick, heavy that thing is. But again, I just don't really care. Just focus on the power of this thing and build the design around that. But what about the lack of a monitor with the Mac Mini? Well, I've said before that actually it's a benefit of that computer because it means you can buy whatever monitor you want. For me, it got me into the ultra widescreen game, which was very enjoyable. But it would be nice to have an option from Apple that isn't their £6,000 Pro XDR display. There have been rumors about this, but they're not particularly solid. No rumors are these days. But the idea being that Apple may create a smaller, 
cheaper version of that Pro XDR display. I would personally snap that up tomorrow and it would be the perfect accompaniment to the Mac Mini. And the reason for that is that personally, I don't think you can get anything close to the likes of the iMac screen and the new MacBook Pro screen from any other manufacturer. I know that's quite a big claim, but when you look at the price of those devices and the screen you get with them, it's just incredible. So Apple, why not make some kind of mini Pro XDR display that is a little bit more afford to be priced for us mere mortals, but which links perfectly with that Mac Mini. Ports is a big thing for me with a Mac Mini. Again, I've made my feelings on this fairly clear in the past. I think it needs more ports. The fact that it only has two USB-A actually bothers me a little bit. It needs more USB-C. I would love to see an SD card reader on there. And again, I think this next Mac Mini is a bit of an opportunity for them to do some of that stuff. I don't think they'll add any more USB-A ports, unfortunately. Please don't take away the two that are there. But I think we will see more USB-C connectivity and potentially an SD card slot. They did, after all, bring it back to the MacBook Pro. And that goes back to the thing I was saying earlier about Apple making a rod for their own backs with this stuff. And actually the fact that they probably won't add any more USB-A ports is quite good news for the likes of Satechi and AGP Tech who offer some really good third-party hubs for the Mac Mini. I'll link above to a comparison I did of those two brands recently. But yeah, more USB-C ports please Apple and just stick an SD card slot in there as well. It's not too much to ask, is it? Adding those M1 Pro and M1 Max chips to the Mac Mini, if that's what Apple does, will inevitably raise the price of them. In fact, I'd estimate you'd probably look at something like £500, $500 extra on top of the current Mac Mini price to get the base level chip of the M1 Pro. That's fine. I may be way off with that figure, by the way. It could be less, it could be more but it's to be expected. But what I really hope Apple does is keep the current M1 chip in the Mac Mini lineup and reduce the price even further. And the reason for that is that the Mac Mini has always been a brilliant way and a much more cost-effective way to get into the Mac OS ecosystem. It's very affordable now, but bringing in, hopefully, the M1 Max and M1 chips in an upper tier version of the Mac Mini gives Apple the chance to again demote is the wrong word, but move the current M1 Mac Mini further down the line, further down the price brackets, and make it available to even more people. That would be a brilliant thing for kids who perhaps wanna learn how to code, for businesses who need to buy these things in bulk, and professionals who want a really capable computer without a huge outlay. So the positioning of this new Mac Mini is gonna be fascinating. We have the opportunity for a low-end M1 version to completely open up the market in terms of pricing. We then have the base spec M1 Pro, which really raises the game in terms of performance. And then at the top end, we have the M1 Max spec'd up, ridiculous version, which can really play up against the current Intel versions of the Mac Pro. So when are we gonna see the next Mac Mini? I have no idea. I don't think anyone does apart from Apple. You can't trust rumors these days. They've very quickly become a parody of themselves. But I think it's fair to assume that we're probably gonna see this Mac Mini either next March sort of time. If it doesn't happen then, it's probably gonna be later next year. It could even be a year from now. I'm gonna put my hat in the ring now and say I think it will be March, I think. But more importantly, I'd love to know, are you looking forward or are you waiting to buy the next Mac Mini? And if so, what features and upgrades are you looking for? You may agree with me or you may have your own ideas about the next Mac Mini. Whatever it is, I'd love to hear them in the comments, so get involved. If you've still got some time and you wanna find out a bit more about how I would choose between the M1 Pro and the M1 Max chip, keep watching for a link to that video at the end of this one. But until next time, thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll catch you next time.